How's it going everybody? So we have this old desk that used to be my wife's since before we got married. So it's about 15 years old and everything on it is broken in one way or another. The drawer falls apart, the tray for the keyboard jams, and one of the biggest issues we have is that it doesn't have a place for the computer tower that we have, so it lives under the desk in the worst possible place. I constantly run into it when using the computer. Anyway, we decided that it was finally time to get a new desk, so that's today's project. Before we get started, go ahead and jump scare the like button next time it's using the table saw, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content. I started with these two laminated panels that were 2 foot by 8 foot. The final dimensions of the desk needed to be about 6 feet, and Mrs. Craftsman wanted the desk to be an L shape so that she would have more desk space to work with. So I cut 2 feet off of the end of both panels with a track saw, and then glued the 2 by 2 section to the side of each panel, giving me the L shape. I needed two of these panels for the desk. I didn't have clamps long enough to reach across the four feet, so I decided to use some extra boards clamped to the workbench and some wedges to use as clamps, and then I just left that overnight. Next, I needed to make the legs. I decided I wanted to make these really thick to make the desk look more substantial, and I also wanted it to be really sturdy when I was done. I knew I didn't want the desk to weigh too much in the end, so I made these hollow boxes that I can later cut down to make the legs. The desk is going to have two layers to it. The upper layer has to have a concave cut in it so you can see the keyboard when typing, and the bottom layer needs to match all of the same curves except it gets a convex curve where the keyboard goes. The legs were really easy to make. They all needed to be cut to 45 degrees, and there were only two sizes that I needed since these are really just rectangular legs. I laid all of the pieces on a piece of tape so they could be held together, and then I put glue on each of the joints. Then I could just fold them together, putting the brad nails in each of the joints. The nails are only there to hold everything together until the glue dries. Everything got a quick sanding up to 300 grit before going on to the next step. Hey, you did it! High five! Yeah! I decided to use Craig screws to attach the top using the Craig jig and then drill holes through the bottom panel to attach the bottom. This is because once the two halves are together, I'll have no way to get the drill into the opening to screw everything together. So I put pocket holes on one side of each of the runners and screwed it into place. Right here you can see that I left a ridge around the entire perimeter of the desk. That's so Mrs. Craftsman can attach the friction arms to the desk in any spot she wants. I made a video on how to make these friction arms in an earlier video. I'll leave a link to that in the description for anyone who's interested in that project. The legs get attached in pretty much the same way. I used the pocket hole bit to drill straight down into the bottom panel and then put screws directly into the legs from the top. Then I could unscrew everything and then I could drill the last few holes for all of the different inserts and then, once I was done with that, I could finally put the finishes on. The runners on the bottom panel got two coats of this forest green paint because it's one of her favorite colors. Then the top panel and the legs got a pre-stain and then a golden oak stain. I always love how well these gel stains work, but it does take a while to buff off all of the stain before the top coat goes on. All of the pieces of the desk are going to get two coats of shellac, and the top gets three sanding between each of the layers, since this is the most visible surface. When everything was dry, I could start the pre-assembly. I was able to attach the runners, but everything else needed to be assembled inside since it won't fit through any of the doors. This also gave me a chance to attach the LEDs to the inside of the desk. Of course, these are really not necessary, but I'm starting to love these things. They always seem to add so much to a project like this, and they are surprisingly cheap and really easy to install. I'll leave a link to these in the description as well for anyone who's interested. The receiver and the transformer can simply be hot glued into place, and then I ran a green power cord that I already had into the desk. The power cord then runs out of a hole in the bottom of the desk. <laughs> sweet. Awesome. <laughs> the desk needed to be brought in in three main parts. The desktop, the bottom panel, and the three legs. The three legs get screwed on first, then the top can be screwed on, and that's basically it. All that's left to do is run all of the cords and install the inserts. Also, this thing is amazing. I'll leave a link to this cool outlet as well because everyone needs one of these. <laughs> okay, I haven't tested this yet, but supposedly. Oh, that is cool. So we got 
got. There we go. And you get to change colors to whatever you want. Probably keep it green. Yeah, I might do teal. Is there a teal? Oh, there's all kinds of colors. Here, <gasps> yeah. keep in the colors. I can have a disco party. <laughs> Well, thanks everybody for watching. If you have a sec, go check out Karish Valandar on Twitch. That's Mrs. Craftsman's channel. This build was mostly so that she could have an easier time streaming. She does all kinds of really cool gaming and even some crafting. It would mean a lot to me if you could simply go check out her channel. The link to that will be the top one in my description. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. Catch y'all next time.